a robot. In talking to him, we found that he was having worsening bouts of depression and anxiety for a couple years, even prior to the pandemic. But since the pandemic had started, things had gotten very dark, very bad for him. And he admitted that he did have a plan. That was very difficult to hear. It was very, very scary. As a parent, I felt like maybe I had failed in some way, that I didn't recognize something I should have. But I realized it doesn't matter what I did or didn't do before. It just mattered what I did going forward. Get him the help he needs, um, support him, and a lot of praying. And so that's what we did. Dr. Ken Duckworth, Chief Medical Officer of the National Alliance on Mental Illness, he joins us right now. Good morning. Good morning. So how has the pandemic made the mental health crisis among teens worse? Uh, Nate, it has worsened the crisis substantially. If you think about the teen years, the young years, getting out, socialization, finding an identity, these are the core developmental tasks of these stages of life. Isolation, not being safe, feeling safe in the world, has made it all very much harder. So rates of depression, rates of anxiety, substantially higher, and suicidal thoughts. So the crisis that we had before has been accelerated by the pandemic need. Now, we were telling parents parents earlier in the show that we would let them know the signs they should look out for. So what are some of those signs? Well, some of the signs are, so first of all, if you have a child like Peyton, uh, and he comes to you and says, here's what I'm dealing with, it will be when it's least convenient for you. You'll be yeah. working on a project. You'll be, you know, it's the day before your uh, tax submissions are due. Stop what you're doing, because that's an affirmation of all the love in the relationship right. between you and your child. When they come to you, it's a moment of tremendous vulnerability. So I'm struggling. I'm not feeling safe. That's a big moment. So take advantage of that moment if you happen to be in a situation like not all kids vocalize not all kids kids do that and that's why it's so impressive what peyton was able to do there's still a lot of shame there's still a lot of a sense that you shouldn't have this experience these are ordinary common treatable conditions and we just have to move past this idea that they people have to suffer in silence. I was reading that one of the things that a parent should look for is losing interest in things, but in particular, losing interest in friends. Losing interest in friends, because remember, back to the idea of development, they want to be with their friends, Yeah. right? They're trying to find an identity that's separate from us, as much as we not, might not always love that. So loss of interest in friends, sleep changes, uh, changes in grades, Uh, Irritability and anger can be a sign of depression. It's not always sadness and withdrawal. Isolation is a concern. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like there's a constellation of things that are fairly Mm nonspecific. But when you start to add them up, an evaluation might be a good idea. I thought it was interesting that the mother said, which is what most parents would say, what did I do, what did I not do? So what 